to today's webinar. My name is Joanna, and today's webinar will be a discussion on account notes, templates, moving money within accounts, joining work orders, and transferring site information, as well as viewing account reports and setting up templates and how to use them. If at any question, if at any moment you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand or ask a question right there in the space that you're allowed to. If anybody is having issues seeing my screen or hearing me right now, just let me know. If not, we will start our webinar. Okay, I don't see any hands raised. Let's start our webinar. The first thing that we will review right now is the billing information. The billing information is accessed to this account number that is in the blue hyperlink. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna open this in a new tab for the purpose of the webinar. In here, you will find the information on the customer for the billing part. You'll have right here, the My Search field. And the My Search field is where you may enter a keyword for searching under the My Search space right here. So you may search by My Search. So if perhaps in this account, you'd like to enter that this is a rental place, you may enter rental. And when you type in rental right here, It will go straight into the account. If there were multiple accounts, we would have uh, the accounts listed. Okay. Scrolling down, as you'll see, we'll have the billing address, the contact information for this customer, the way we choose for to bill them, and we'll have the billing profile. Over down here, we'll have the UDF information. UDF stands for User Defined Fields. These are specific criteria for the customer and it's managed either from here or the setup. And in here we have a set of options. So perhaps we would like to set this customer on financial hold or send it to collections as of today. We'll have the option of setting up the dates right here. And right below you'll see the primary account note and the secondary account note. Basically, these are uh, notes for important information, and they will appear the in yellow. Will, you will have the primary account note, and in red, you'll see the secondary account note in the middle of the screen. And none of this information will print out on anything, so work orders, invoices. So perhaps you'd like to indicate that this customer has files on account, not fields, files files on account, or perhaps you'd like to remember that uh, do not call do not call customer, and you'll see that if we finish, and we click on finish, this information will appear in here. The do not call files on account, as I said, in yellow, and the do not call, since it's the secondary account note, it will appear in red, and you'll see that if I send to collections, or if this account is financial hold, it will appear here. In the top portion of the screen of the information for the account, you will see the private account notes. The private account notes are basically notes that are used for internal um, use only. So again, private account notes, if you add them in here, they will not print out on any work orders. And again, you can select for which service address and the status is an optional. So let's go back. Right below the private account notes, what you will see is the, is the program balances for the account. So the current balance, the 30-day balance, and so on, as well as the prepay balance set on the account, and the account balance, as well as the debit one. Right in here, if we click on the show program balances, we'll be able to see the details. And this is the, is the place where you can see the balances and in more detail and move the payments from these programs to these programs and from invoices to invoices. So in this case, I only have money to move from invoices because I don't have any prepaid balance left. But let me see if I can find an account just so that I can show you how it would look like if I had any prepaid balance. Okay, this account does not have prepaid balance. I'm sorry about that. Hmm. 
If not, I'll show you how to transfer from invoices, which is exactly the same. Oh, here we have an account that has prepay balance. So if we click on show program balances, we'll be able to move the credit balance to a program or to an invoice. In, first, in the first case, if you'd like to move it to a different program or to an invoice, it's only for an invoice of this program. And if we'd like to move it for an invoice for a different program, we will first have to move it to program. And you will do this by clicking over here to program, selecting to which one of these programs and the amount of money you'd like to transfer. So let's say, for example, I'd like to transfer money into this mosquito control. So as you see, we have $750 in here. So we can just choose to use 500 and leave 250. As you see, the amount will decrease in here. We can also send the money into a different account just by clicking change account and by typing in the number of the account and then just searching for this account number. In this case, for the purpose of this, um, for the purpose of this webinar, I'm just not gonna transfer any money. So I'm just gonna close this tab and go back to our original account. And that would be the way to transfer money from invoices and to invoices as well as from programs to programs. What I'd like to show you now is how to actually join work orders. Work orders can only be joined if they are under the same program and they have not been completed. So if I go into activity work orders and not complete it, we'll see that we have a set of work orders that have not been completed. So what I'll do is I'll enter over here into the details. And right here where it says join work orders, this is where I'll click. This is just work order, the overview. And in here, as I said, it has to be under the same program. So it will list all of the ones that are have not been completed and that are for the same program. So I'm just gonna click on this one and I'm gonna click, as you can see, the name will generate in here, and I'll just click on join. Once it's joined, I will show you how to unjoin them. So once we're here, once we click on join, it will take us to the, the same screen as we were before, and just to save this, we'll only need to click on save. But let's say, um, we made a mistake and we'd like to unjoin work orders. So again, we're gonna come over here into activity, work orders not completed. And we'll see that we'll click over here into the details again. And as soon as we're in the screen, what we will do is we will go into the event tab. And as you can see, we have two work orders in here. The one that was the original one and the one that we just joined. So since I don't want to have them joined, all I'll need to do is split to new work order. And just by clicking in that, onto that, what we'll do is we'll split the work orders that we just joined. And afterwards, again, all we'll have to do is click on save. Let me just show you that now we will only have the original one in here and we don't have two work orders appearing back to back. So now I'm just going to click on save. And I wanted to show you a feature over at the setup. And this is important to remember just because um, however you have it set up in here is how it will reflect on account level. So we will go into organizational preferences right here. It's an alphabetical order. I just typed it in so that it's easier to look. And when we're in here, we will go into the program options tab and in here, what we will see is this option, split work orders that have same schedule date of the same program. So if we have this unselected, work orders that are scheduled for the same date on the same program, they will always appear as one work order. So they will be joined. And if we have it selected in here, whenever you add a program and you have two, two work orders for the same date, they will appear as two separate work orders. They will not be joined. In this case, I'm just gonna go back. And what I'd like to teach you how to do next is how to set up template notes and how to use them. Template notes are basically a set of notes that are used regularly across the system. So let me show you for setting up the template notes. You'll just have to go into template notes setup. 
I'm just going to enter it here. And as you see, there's a lot of template notes. I'm just going to add a new one right here. And you'll have to set up a template category. So as, I, as you can see, we have a lot of testing ones, but perhaps you like to have invoice ones or notes ones. In this case, we're just going to create a regular note. So I'm just going to click on note. And for the purpose of the webinar, we're just going to do a webinar test. And always remember that if you'd like to see this uh, note on the mobile application, this has to be synced in. And always keep in mind that it has to be active. So perhaps we'd like to, um, in this case, we'd like to warn our text of wearing the dog that is in the property so beware dog and we'll just click on save and now I'm just going to teach you how to use them and for here what you will do is we will go into the account and I'll go back into the accounts home and as you can see in here we have the option to send email to tech so I'm just going to click here Send the email to tech. And as you can see, the from will be automatically generated and we'll just have to choose a person from the list of texts available. I'm just going to choose a random one. And if we scroll all the way down, we'll have a field that we can enter the note. So we can copy notes from templates in here. So for example, I'm just going to choose webinar test, if I can find it in here. There's just a lot of webinar notes, so it's this one, note, webinar test. So we can just click on copy and the message will be copied in here. We just need to click OK to send it. And the other way that we can use it, as you can see in here, this will be the correspondence of the email. So we have a way to check what we've sent to our technician. So I'm just going to go back into the account. And I'm going to show you how to set this for the instructions to print. So perhaps you'd like to have this in the instructions to print for the site. So this is again for technicians under the site menu. What we're going to do is click on edit site. And again, all of this information will be available to enter with the customer's information for the site. And in here we have the instructions to print field. So again, we can copy from the templates and we have note, webinar test, and we can copy and it will say we were a dog. So all we need to do is finish in here. To continue with our webinar, I will show you how to transfer sites into another account. Always keep in mind that when transferring sites, all of the information will will remain on the actual account. So all the information for the balances will be uh, kept in the original account and all else will be moved. So all the programs, all the events will be moved except for the information for the balance account, for the balance of that, uh, sorry, for that site. So what I'm gonna click is over here into the site menu of the site. And what I'm gonna click, it's this, option right here, which is transfer. And what you'll see is that automatically a message is generated indicating who has transferred the site. You may add more notes. Customer has new account, perhaps. And in here, what you may do is either set it to a new account, in which case when you click on transfer, it will ask you uh, to generate a new account. But if it's an existing account, you just, again, need to type in the account number and search for it. And that way, by clicking on transfer, you'll be able to transfer the site. For the purpose of this webinar, again, I'm not going to transfer the site, but that's all you need to click, transfer. I'm just going to hit cancel. And for now, let me just go ahead and show you how to run account notes. This is the last thing that we will do today in today's webinar. So. Account notes are a set of reports, I, account notes, I'm so sorry, account reports. Account reports are a set of reports that we can run under the account drop-down menu, right here, account reports, legacy basic reporting. 
And right here, we'll have a set of account reports that we can run, okay? This is all, this report, is, again, 